What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm back doing another everything I learned video. So this is a new part of my channel where I listen to a beat tape, I break down every track and try and pick out something that I learned from that track. And the idea of this really is to help my beat making but by doing this out loud it should also help your beat making as well. So you can expect to find new techniques, new sounds, new ideas for beats, those kind of things. So I think these are really beneficial. I've got a few videos which I've already done which you can check out on my playlist. Today I'm going to be doing the Delhi Vibes 2. Now this is quite a long album this one so there are a lot of tracks to get through. There's 20 in total so I'll do my best to make this video as short as possible but you might want to grab a beverage to listen along with this one. And yeah, there has been some comments about why I only include such a small amount of the song in these videos and that is because of copyright. Unfortunately, if YouTube detects the track in any of my videos then I get demonetized for it, which at this point in time on the channel, obviously the, that monetization is very valuable to me. So I need to have monetization on these videos. So yeah, the idea is you can go to Spotify and listen to these tracks and you can pause my video, then you can come back to it and listen to my analysis if you wanted to do that. I think that's the best way to follow along with these videos. Okay, so let's get into this one the Delhi Vibes 2. Now track one I'm gonna go straight in with this one because it's very short and there's not much to this one. It's a jazz sample which it ties in to the rest of the album but when you first hear it it's just kind of an introductory track to the album. It's just a piece of jazz music and the only thing I picked up from this is that there is a nice crisp noise sound in the background that he's overlaid and interestingly he's panned this very hard to the left. Now I've never thought of panning noise I always just kind of have it as a mono signal over the entire track so panning it over to the left I think just gives it a bit more space particularly if you've got a lot of other stuff going on in the track obviously there isn't in this one but that is a technique which we do see throughout the rest of this album so interesting to hear that he does it on this track but yeah not an awful lot to say about this one it is just kind of a piece of jazz music it ties in to the rest of the album further down so I'll get into that when that comes up okay so track two is Tyner let's give this one a listen now and I'll share my thoughts Okay, this is a very, very well-known lo-fi sample, but I like the fact that he did something a bit different with this one. He didn't just take the full loop, he cut it up and rearranged it to make it a bit more interesting and add a lot more bounce to the beat as well. I really like the way that he used the isolator at the start of this track, and this is something that I've talked about before, I think, in different videos, is that if you use isolator at the start of the track, what it does is it makes the track sound really tinny. And then when you actually drop the main beat, it sounds like it's got a really warm bassy sound to it because you're adding so much more bass when you do the drop. So that's definitely a technique that is very prevalent in lo-fi music and beat making and it's something you should definitely try. So just run a few bars of the track, even with the drums as well, with the isolator and then on the beat, take off the isolator, bring in the bass, bring in the mids. And that has a really good effect on the listener because it instantly makes the beat feel a lot fuller, which is a good trick. If your track doesn't feel too full, then definitely try this at the start of your tracks. Again, like I mentioned in track one, the noise is panned over to the left again. I'm getting a lot of the noise in my left ear. So that's an interesting effect. And like I say, it might be something to do with the mixing and it just gives other things a bit more space in the mix but I do like that effect and it's definitely something that I'm going to try on my beats and finally as well this is a great example of letting the bass in the sample do the work he doesn't overlay any of his own sub or bass in this track so you can get away with it if there's enough bass in the samples that you're using and you chop them correctly you can get away with using that as the bass for your track you could even use isolator again like I mentioned to up those lows a little bit and make it a little bit more bassy so you don't always have to add your own bass line to make a full beat. Okay, moving on to track three. This one is called 1.47am. Let's give this one a listen and see if there's anything to learn from this one. Okay, that was 1.47am and the thing I really like about this track is the foley's that he uses in this one. There's a nice theme to them, there's kind of a nature theme to them, so there's lots of bird sounds all the way through the track. And also I really like that seaside sound that he uses at the start of the track as well. Now this is something I think I talked about in the last Everything I Learned. Putting a layer like this underneath your tracks can really help to make things sound a lot more interesting and it adds a lot more depth as well. So the way he does this with the seaside sounds is really nice, I really like that. It adds a very, very nice kind of nostalgic feel into the track straight away because I'm sure a lot of us have got memories of being at the seaside so instantly for me that was hugely nostalgic even though obviously I had nothing to do with the writing of this track. 
So quite a clever technique that to draw the listener in and I think it makes the track sound that much more interesting as well, which is really cool. This is something I've noticed as well as a lot of feel in the drums in this track and I think that's really important to notice that it's not a good idea to always settle for the first idea that you come up with. Maybe go back and work it and see how you can improve it a little bit more. I think that's something with my drums definitely. I tend to stick to very similar patterns all the time, but well, maybe if I go back and work them a little bit more I can come up with more interesting stuff. So. That's definitely something I've taken away from this track is to work a little bit harder on my drum patterns and try and get that energy into them and try and make them a little bit more interesting too. Okay, that was Bossa, and the one thing that I noticed about this straight away is there is a crazy amount of panning going on with the sample on this one. Definitely something I've never even thought of doing, so it's really cool to listen to these albums and hear things that you've never even thought of doing before. Things like this can really help to make your track sound a lot different to the other tracks on the album and just add a lot more spice into your beat making collections so I really like the way that he's done that in this track and this is another example I've talked about this before as well is leaving the bass out at the start of the track so he doesn't bring in the sub or the bass line until later on in the track and that just hits the listener a little bit because you've got used to a certain sound of the beat and then the bass comes in with that really low sound and instantly it's kind of a satisfying feeling when it comes in so that's something I've taken away from other music before and that's definitely something you should try as well you don't want everything given to the listener in one go because then the track will be really boring for the rest of the time. It's really good to have different elements that introduce themselves along the course of the beat so it's more of a journey and more of a story. One thing that I've noticed about his drums in this particular album is that there is a kind of homage to the old school kind of 90s boom bap sound. He uses quite a lot of reverb on his drums and I think that's particularly obvious in this track. There's a heavy amount of reverb and it just gives it that kind of golden era vibe. I've talked about this a lot in my Everything I've Learned albums, but I think one of the key characteristics of those old school sounding drums is the reverb on the snare. So I think that reverb adds a bit more depth to the drums and it makes them sound a bit nicer. And like I say, yeah, it's a bit of a homage to the old sort of 90s boom bap sound as well. In this one as well, he does a very classic golden era technique, which is to filter out all the highs. So he uses a low pass filter on the sample and pulls all the highs down and then reintroduces them again. You'll hear this a lot in old school beat making. Usually it's a great way to make way for the vocals to come in if there's someone rapping over the top. In just instrumental beats like this, it's just a good way of adding a bit more dynamic to the beat. So that's something you can easily try is just panning a low pass filter in and out on the sample. That's a really simple and effective technique for making the beat sound a little bit more diverse. Okay, let's move on to track number five. This is Vanilla Ice Cream. Okay, that was Vanilla Ice Cream and there's a couple of things I really like about this track. I really love the percussion that he uses in this one. There's kind of a shaker sound panning from left to right, which adds a really, really nice and unique feel to the beat. I also love the way he's layered those vocals in this track as well. There's obviously the main sort of jazz guitar and then he's layered these vocals over the top, which is a really nice touch. Now, if you dig enough, you can find quite easily isolated vocals on their own and then you can retune them with whatever device it is that you're using, whether it's a door or your SP. If you're fortunate enough to have the Mark II, it's really easy to do on that. You can re-pitch things and get them to match the key of the beat. So then you can take vocals from a completely different track and put them on your own. And yeah, it just adds a nice layer over the top of the beat. One thing that he does in this one as well, which is a very common technique, is just to drop the snares out for said period of time, say three to four bars, maybe even longer than that. And what this does is it adds a kind of suspense to the beat, which I really like because you just really want that snare to come back in. So leaving that gap is a really, really nice idea. You get that suspense and then when the snares come back in again, it kind of relieves all that sense of suspense and what you're left with is a very satisfied feeling again. So that's definitely something that I've already started doing. I actually did that on a beat, which I dropped on my Instagram yesterday. Just went to hi-hat only for a couple of bars and then when you bring back those drums again it's just a really satisfying feeling and on the same topic he also does this for the bass as well so he kind of has like an a b structure with the bass in this particular beat a when the bass is playing then b when it's not and then a again and again it has exactly the same effect as what i've just mentioned it adds a lot of suspense and then when it's taken out again you feel like there's something missing and you're waiting for it to come back in and then when it does it has that satisfying feeling so some really interesting effects in that one in terms of suspense and I think that's a great way of making your beats sound a lot more interesting. Okay next up is track 6, this one is called 12.05am, let's give this one a listen and see what we can learn.
Okay, that was 12.05 a.m. and there's a few things that I really want to take away from this beat. The first one is the snare. Now this is like a percussion laid over the top of a snare. This is something that I really, really need to start doing more is layering sounds together to get more unique sounds instead of just using straight snares or rim shots or just a piece of percussion on its own. If you start layering these sounds, you're gonna get unique sounds that people haven't heard before and that definitely is going to impress. In this track as well, he's got a really, really deep sub sound, which is very satisfying to listen to. And one thing that I noticed about this sub line is it's not overly complicated, and I think that is something really important to learn from listening to other beat makers. It's rare that the bass lines are super complicated or over the top because it would just be too distracting. You want something that complements the rhythm of the beat and the drum pattern too. So it gives me more confidence with my sub lines to know that you don't need to do loads and loads of different notes two maybe three notes max is going to be more than enough and you can even get away with just one sometimes so if you're struggling with bass just keep it simple and you're still going to be able to get a good effect with it it's all about just padding out that low end at the end of the day again in this one as well just wanted to point out that he's done the same effect with the noise he's used noise but panned it to the left as well i don't know if there's a specific reason for this like i say i think it is something to do with just keeping space for the rest of the things in the mix but i want to try this when i'm making a beat and see what it does maybe it opens up something that i'm not understanding from just listening to this so yeah definitely going to try that out on the next couple of beats that i make Okay, track seven is garbage. Let's see what this one sounds like. Okay, that was garbage, and I really like the shuffle on the hi-hats on this one. Now, I find these hi-hat patterns quite hard to do on the SP, especially because a lot of the time I'm using resample, but maybe if I spend a little bit more time in pattern mode and get those hi-hats down, I'm gonna get a much more interesting sound. So they've got loads of shuffle on them, which I really, really like. I think that's a really prominent thing in this beat, which you notice straight away is the way those hi-hats sound. And one technique that he uses in this track, which I really like, is he introduces the drums before the sub, and then it pauses the drums very quickly to add that sub note in and that is the introduction of the sub. I think that's a really clever technique. It's just kind of like everything moving out the way for the sub to go hello and introduce itself almost into the track which is quite an interesting way of thinking about it. Literally like it's given a musician space to introduce himself into the track. So really really like that technique. That's something I definitely want to try. And on this one is another thing that I've noticed about this album is he does tend to use very very long fade outs. Now I'm not sure quite yet what that effect has on the listener. I'm not sure what the actual intention behind it is, um, but that's certainly a theme of this album is that there's a few tracks which have extremely long fade outs and uh, it's, yeah, it's a curious concept and maybe a little bit further down the album I'll be able to understand why that's the case. Okay, track eight is called Pastels. Let's give this one a listen and see if there's anything we can pull out of this one. Okay, that was Pastels, and to be honest, this track I'm really not sure about on this one. I think it's a little bit too distorted. I can hear the sound that he's going for. He's got a really muddy sample sound. Now, whether that was just from an old dirty record or whether he's done that using things like the SP devices to make that kind of muddy effect or sound, I'm not really sure. But yeah, I think just on this one, it doesn't quite hit the same as the other tracks on the album. There's just a bit too much distortion. He's put distortion on the sub as well. And I just think all in all, it sounds a bit too muddy compared to the rest of the album. If that was more of a theme in the album, I would like that, but I think it's just a bit too random in this track. The other tracks that he has on this album have got a very sort of clean mix to them. So yeah, he's really tried to mix things up in this one and add a lot of distortion in the low end. But to me, I don't know, this track just really doesn't do it for me. I didn't really enjoy this one too much. Okay, the next track is called 389. Let's see if we can learn anything from this particular beat. Okay, that was 389 and there's certainly some things to learn from this one. I really like the way he introduces the sample but then fades it out. Now this is a technique I definitely need to use. I've heard this loads of times but never used it on my own beat. So bring in an idea, fade it out into nothing and then come in with everything at the same time. That's a really, really good technique and it kind of like, it's kind of like a false start in a way. So you start in the track, it fades out, the listener almost feels like they're coming towards the end of something and then just hit them with the drums and the sample and it's 
just got a really punchy effect to that so I really like that idea and again I've noticed here after that last track which was really distorted he's really sort of up the layers of texture on these last two tracks and made them a lot more dirty brought that noise way up in the mix and just added a lot more grit and grain to the track so that's interesting to make a note of there's definitely loads of different places you can put noise in a track and it's interesting to see him experiment with that so if you don't experiment too much with that maybe try higher up in the mix low down in the mix panning them like we've already talked about as well i think there's loads of uh, inspiration there for what to do with your noise in the background of your beats okay halfway through now track 10 this one's called girls on gourd let's have a listen to this one Okay, there's a lot going on with this track which I want to talk about. The first thing is the layer, again, underneath the foley, just adds such a nice texture to the beat, but we've already talked about that topic, so you know exactly what that's all about. So definitely something to take away from this album. I love the kick pattern in this one as well. I love those three hits in a row. I think that just adds a really, really punchy sound to the beat, and that is something that I definitely want to try out. I don't think I've ever done a pattern where there's three kicks in a row like that, so definitely something that I want to try. He also has an effect in this track as well where he pauses and then hits a very high reverbed snare now i've never heard that technique before in a beat and i really really dig that so if you listen to the track you'll understand what i mean the drums are going along and then the drums will stop and then just one snare will hit but it has a lot of reverb on it it could be the same snare but it's got a lot of reverb on it and that just hits and it's just an interesting pause technique so that's something that i'll definitely take away from this track okay moving on to track 11 again there's not much to say about this one but this is where it starts tying in with the introduction this one is called elevator interlude and again it's just a piece of jazz music and it just breaks up the album a little bit i kind of find this is like a bit of a palate cleanser say if you're having a meal with a lot of courses you may have just a palate cleanser like a sorbet just to clear everything off out of the mouth and then um and then start again so it's kind of a reset button on this album i think and it just means that you don't get too sick of everything that's going on obviously with beat making albums one thing that you really want to try and avoid is repetition which is very difficult so it's really interesting to hear how he's gone about doing that on this album and i think that interlude is a good way of doing it okay let's move on to track 12 and this one is called 5 32 pm let's see what this one sounds like Okay, this is an extremely famous lo-fi beat. You may well have heard this one before. It's had 124 million streams, this beat, which is absolutely insane. And this is kind of like the quintessential lo-fi beat, in my opinion. The drums are super crispy and nice, very mellow sample. Now, I'm not sure if he's layered this sample because check out the sample when you're listening to it, especially in headphones. You'll hear that there's different parts of the sample that are in different positions in your ears. And I just wonder whether he's layered stuff and panned it or whether that's just the way the original track that he sampled from was panned either way it's a very nice and interesting effect adds a lot of depth to the beat and one thing that i really like about this beat as well is that he drops the snares out of the drum pattern and brings in claps instead now that really mixes things up it keeps it interesting and yeah i really like that technique again something that i've never thought of doing but something that i would definitely want to introduce into my beats it just is a huge breather and a change of dynamic with the drums, so I really like that idea. Okay, next up, track 13, which is hashtag Tina Ham. Let's give this one a listen and see what we can learn from it. Okay, really like the funny sample at the start of this one. I think it just adds a little bit of humour and a little bit of character to the album, so I love the way that he's used that. And overall, I really like the hypnotic kind of sound of this album. It's got that kind of trippy sound to it, and I think he's achieved that through a lot of sidechain. The sample seems to be ducking in and out a lot in this beat, and I think probably that sidechain to the kick. Maybe more sounds from the drum pattern as well, but yeah, he's cutting in and out. It seems like he's doing a hell of a lot of sidechaining, and that gives it this really sort of hypnotic and cool sound. Again, in this one as well, I really love the high hat pattern i love that swing on the hi-hats and that is definitely a takeaway for me i get so locked into doing four four hi-hat patterns for my beat so yeah i need to branch out i need to start doing more experimental things like you can hear in this particular track okay next up we've got vibes let's have a listen to this one let's see what we can learn Okay, in this one again, we can hear that isolator trick that is used where you start with an isolated sound. It's usually very high end and then bringing in the rest of the beat and then taking that off really is a good effect. Very, very interesting use of percussion on this one for the hi-hats if you listen. It's definitely not your normal hi-hat sound. It's more of like a patting kind of noise in a way. So I love the way that he's done that in this particular beat. I find it particularly hard to experiment with percussion and changing it out for different sounds because I always feel like you lose some sort of dynamic. So 
keeping that full sound and using percussion instead of traditional drum sounds is a really, really impressive technique to me. And that's definitely something I need to spend more time trying to figure out. There's something I've noticed that he does on a couple of tracks on this album as well, where he introduces a drone note underneath the whole beat. I really, really like this effect and I definitely want to pinch this one. So the beat will be going along and you'll hear just a continuous note coming underneath and it just adds another layer. Just like I mentioned, just adding those new layers in just makes it a little bit more interesting to listen to and it stops the repetition a little bit. So that's definitely a really nice idea. So you could just take the pitch of anything, pitch it to the right sound or frequency for your beat so it all sounds like it's in tune and then just run that under the beat at a certain point. And yeah, I really like that technique. I definitely, definitely want to try that. Okay, onto track 15, this is looping. Let's see what this one sounds like. Okay, that was looping. A couple of things to note about this one. Again, we can hear this kind of weird, it's either side chain or very, very heavily chopped samples. Now, it gives this really weird effect where it kind of feels like you're moving up and down really quickly. I'm not sure if that makes sense. It kind of feels like you're getting thrown around up and down all over the place by these chops and potentially also sidechain at the same time as well. So really like that effect on this particular beat. And yeah, all in all, just really like the busy sound of this one. It's a really full sound. And also at the end, the switch up is amazing as well. So listen out for that one. I do really like switch ups and beats. And if you're not familiar with that term, it's basically where the chops just completely change. So he may have sampled from a different part of the track. He may have sampled a completely different track, not too sure on this particular occasion. It's usually from the same track, but yeah, you just get thrown in with a completely different set of sample chops and that just makes the whole track change course to become something completely different and yeah it's a very interesting effect okay next up we're nearly at the end now track 16 this is day in the life let's see what we can learn from this particular song okay only a couple of things to note from this one now this is a beatles song originally but i don't know this version of it i've never heard this version of it before but it is day in the life and that is the name of the track as well the one takeaway that i got from this again is the drums they just sound so heavy and nice and again an ode back to that sort of 90s hip-hop sound really really like the drums in this particular track and again like i've mentioned before he just relies on the bass line from the sample for this one to provide the low end so if you do struggle with bass lines, then maybe you could try this technique instead by just letting the bass of the track that you've sampled ring out instead and use that as your low end. Okay, moving on to 17, this is called Sleepy Vibes. Let's have a listen to this one. Okay, a few things to note from this one. I really like the reverb on the drums again. There's a really punchy sound to them, but that reverb just gives them a massive space in the mix. It takes up a lot of room in the mix, and I like that. The panning of the sample is really interesting. I think I mentioned this on another track as well, but check out where the piano is in your ear. That's over to the right, and then I kind of think there's a xylophone over in the left ear as well. So sometimes you do get lucky with these samples and they're panned into different ears, and it makes the listening experience far more interesting when you've got different things in different sides of your head rather than everything just in the middle. And yeah, just like Lastly, I really like the use of the shaker in this one. I love percussion in tracks like this. So again, like I've mentioned, I wanna work on this more and this is more inspiration for that. Okay, next up is track 18. This is Pastels 2. So let's listen to this one and see what we can learn. Okay, this to me is kind of my all time favorite sound for lo-fi. I just love everything that's going on in this track. You've got the jazzy sample, which is kind of got a little bit of distortion on it, a little bit of worn kind of sound on it, which I really, really dig. You've got really, really punchy, crisp drums, and then you've got that really punchy subline pushing everything along as well. So this is everything I love about lo-fi hip hop and instrumental hip hop. And check out the chops on this particular beat. They're absolutely crazy. Listen to the way the piano falls on these chops. Just don't know how you listen to that and make that into a loop. That's really, really special in this beat. So have a particular listen out for that one. Okay, this Mammoth video is almost coming to an end. The next track is called Wah Wah. Let's give this one a listen. What can we learn from this track? Okay, that was Wah Wah. And obviously it's the name of the track as well. One thing to take away from this is the use of Wah on the sample. Now I've never ever used that effect on the SP for a sample like this in a beat. So that's definitely a really good form of inspiration. That's definitely something I wanna try, but yeah, I just think the effect works really well in this particular beat. And that's the biggest takeaway from this one. 
I just really want to try that one out and see how I can make that sound. And the last track, again, there's not really much to say about this one. This one's called Outro, and it kind of ties into that theme of the jazz all the way through it. You had the intro, the track near the middle of the album, and this one at the end as well. So there is a bit of a theme running through it. Just ties everything together and ends off the album very nicely. And yeah, obviously, it's kind of a nod to all the jazz he's probably sampled. I think that's the reason for doing those particular tracks. So that was a monster one guys, god knows how long this is going to take me to edit because I'm just looking at my camera now and I've done 40 minutes worth of talking. So yeah, straight to the editing room for this one, there's a lot for me to do here. Really, really appreciate your support with this series. I think there's so much to learn from these albums and I hope this is making it easier than you listening it to yourselves. Don't forget to leave your suggestions for other ones in the comments below. You guys have been throwing in artist names and it just reminds me of lo-fi artists that I used to listen to maybe two, three years ago. And yeah, this was certainly the case with this one. I think someone mentioned the Deli in the comments and straight away I thought, yeah, definitely got to do a Deli album. So leave comments below, let me know what I should do next. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe because I'm dropping these roughly every two weeks alongside all my other lo-fi videos that I drop and a thumbs up would be very much appreciated as well. Thanks a lot for watching guys, I'll be back with more content very soon. Keep making beats. Peace!